fact that you are here watching this video means that you're either looking for, in the process of, or just simply wanted to know more information about the Audi TT Mark I. And in this video, I'm gonna go over five different points that you should look for when buying an Audi TT Mark I, like this, like this very dirty example in 2024. Now, welcome back boys and girls to another Josh's POV video. Now, I've been wanting to make this video for like, I think it's about four years. We finally got around to it. We finally got some time. Now, there is a lot of other buyers guys actually on YouTube of Mark 1 TTs, but points that we're gonna mention in this video are completely different to any other points that I've mentioned in other videos. So please do stay tuned because some of the information, like I said, if you are looking to buy or wanting to buy, or in the process of buying a Mark 1 TT, please consider these points that we mentioned in this video because you never know, they might save you a lot of money. Bosh, that's a good start. So, uh, number one, uh, the paintwork exterior. It's probably the first thing you look at when you buy a car. So you, you, you look at it, it looks great on the photos. You know, you've come up to the advert, you're like, oh, can I come see the car? You get there. It's a pile of shit. The Mark 1 TT comes in plenty of colours. Um, there's plenty of YouTubers that have done videos on the colours. There's hundreds of them around. Some are rarer, some are pretty common. Um, some are very nice, some are a bit questionable. Um, one of the things to look at is the condition of the paintwork. As for any car, this isn't Mark 1 specific, but we want to make sure that the paintwork's good, especially for colours like red, for example. So there's a few, you've got Missiano red, Amulet red, um, brilliant red, there's a few reds that, that come in the Mark 1 TT. Especially amulet red, everybody knows if you've got one, it is peeling the lacquer. There is no amulet red out of the factory that's lasted the years that it has and not peeled lacquer. So um, it's always good to walk around the car, have a look at some of these points. So we're looking around the arches as for every car, but especially we'll see a lot of rust down here. Um, obviously arches, we'll look under the car in a minute. This is a nice little place for it to rust to, that's always prone to rust. and the wings love to rust here. So one of the things we want to look at is just the condition. Mostly 20 plus year old car, it is going to be rusty. You're going to struggle to find one that isn't. And if it is, then it's it's been done and kept well and, and resprayed at some point because no car can last that long unless it's garaged. So obviously um, that's probably the number one factor when you look at the car, you want to make sure that the car looks good because uh, at the end of, well, mechanically we need to look at that too, but we want to make sure that the car is looking good when we buy it. So as we'll enter a clip in here of my lack of peel. Flashback probably the worst bit this wasn't as bad as like five minutes ago but Matty decided that he was gonna rip some of this off end of flashback you've just got to be prepared so when you see a car that is peeling um, the lack of falling off you need to realize that it probably will need a respray at some point and like my car the TT that we built on the channel that needed a full respray so it's something to just factor in um, when you are going to buy the car just to make sure that it is something that you are willing to pay so the next big part is obviously suspension. So the part that actually touches the floor, the wheels, this is probably the most important part of the car because you need to make sure it's nice, settled, keeps you safe um, and everything works fine. So as for every car, we first thing we want to check is the tyre tread. We want to make sure that the tyre doesn't have any damage to it. Um, well, this one's gorgeous here. Uh, very, very, very good tyre. We weren't pan we we panning too close on that. <laughs> We want to make sure that the tyres are good, that we've got tread. Same again, looking in here, we can see we've got the standard brakes there, we've got plenty of pad life. Check the, checking the discs um, to make sure that they've still got some life left in them. And it's one of those things that does need changing over time. So when we do buy a car, it's one of the things we need to look at, you know, is this going to be something we need to do shortly? Once again, we're factoring an expense. And when purchasing a car of this age, there's plenty of them that add up. Once we've checked all this out and we know everything's working fine in here, it's always good to have a look under the car. So we'll see, like we mentioned earlier, you can see the sill rust a bit better here. Um, so this is where we normally expect it. There's always a garden behind there. You can insert the clip. Flashback. It also comes with... <laughs> this car is now officially a garden. Um, so yeah. End of flashback. Of your, your garden growing in there. And then underneath the car, there's um, obviously all these suspension components. So with a 100,000 mile car, you're gonna see that the bushes are worn out. Obviously a corroded subframe in most cases, because as we know in the UK, we've got plenty of salt, plenty of water and moisture, especially if the car's been bought up or lived in Scotland, anywhere up north um, or anywhere near the sea. Um, we love to see the corrosion on there. While 
Most of the time it is only surface corrosion. We do just want to have a look and make sure you can't poke your finger through it and there's no massive holes when it comes to the suspension on the front. Um, when it comes to the front, it's pretty sturdy. The trailing arms and the subframe hold it nicely together. So if you do have any holes, in most cases, it can be repairable. But once again, it's something to factor in. If you're not going to be doing the work yourself, it does start to add up because we have stretch bolts in there. We have powder coating and we have to get secondhand suspension parts. So, you know, you, few, you're a few hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Damn, that's expensive. Yeah, so then you're a few hundred pound in potentially thousands if you're not doing the labor yourself into your suspension and you've not yet got to drive your new car. So that's a big one to look at here. If we move to the back, obviously that all sounds pretty daunting, but a lot of us that love these cars want to keep them on the road. So we've already fixed all that. So when buying a car, if you have budget, it's always better to look at cars that have had this fixed. So a lot of people put coilovers on them to minimize any suspension issues. A lot of people upgrade the brakes. Same with the powder coating it, getting some new poly bushes in there, even if it is OEM ones, just getting it back up to um, the OEM spec and making it work. Obviously it will set you back more money. However, in the long run, you won't be paying all the money, the labor and the time to take your whole car apart and put it all back together. So it's worth looking at cars that have already been upgraded, that have been kept by enthusiasts, especially when you're buying off people on the forums who have looked after them. Um, a lot of them will have pictures and history of getting all these suspension bits fixed and maintained to make sure that they last as long as they possibly can. So a perfect segue from Matty talking about servicing the brakes and the suspension and everything but I'm gonna be talking about servicing this. So this is the 180 that comes in all of the Audi TT Mark 1s. This engine is, well, I mean, I'd probably say it's bulletproof. With good servicing with this engine, people have been known, especially on the forums and things like that, people have been known to get around 350,000 miles out of this engine, which for a 180, for a petrol is, is quite considerate. I mean, that's like diesel numbers. Usually with this car, you want it to be serviced around every 10,000 miles or every one year. When we're talking about that, we're talking about the actual filters in the engine. So air filter, oil filter, and, and just replacing the oil and obviously spark plugs as well. Now, this is not actually an expensive service itself. A lot of these parts are readily available from Parker's, the cam belt. The cam belt needs to be done every right 60, 60,000 miles and obviously if you're going to buy one that's around 100,000 miles it would be a bonus if this is going to be done obviously pre to you buying the car if not not to worry obviously it's a very common job and you can also potentially try it yourself however if you're not experienced such as myself I would not bother I would either look for a car that's potentially had it done and pay that little bit extra just because it's had it done or take it to a garage straight away so you've got a good base for when you actually start to drive the car because again these are interference engines and the last thing you want to do is buy a car have the cam belt snapped and then have a very expensive large paperweight if i can do it you can as well and there's plenty of videos of us doing it on the channel so if you are interested the videos are there just behind the driver's side we have the fuel filter now the fuel filter can be a bit of a pain to change and it's something that if you were to try it by yourself do be aware that the clips that actually clip onto the fuel filter can be perished and has potential to break moving a little bit further back is the Haldex system i would show you this but it's really deep under the car sort of like around here now the Haldex system is what actually gives this car its four-wheel drive and if the Haldex has not been serviced regularly which is about 30 thousand miles for the the oil to be changed and then the filter if that's not been done there is actually risk could cause damage to the transfer box as well as the gearbox itself and we know this because Matty actually had this happen and it cost him a lot of money to fix what Five times. yeah I thought you said 10 times I was like <laughs> so the the interior. Um, this is a, a touchy subject for Mark 1 TTs because they do wear. We've got um, these centre consoles, we've got all these lovely bit of plastic, these timeless designs where really, you know, it's, it's, it's a classic at the end of the day. Oh, I treat it as a classic. Basically, we need to look at how it's been used over the years. So most of these cars, when you're purchasing a Mark 1 TT, you're probably around the 100,000 mile mark, 80K, 120, some are going up to 150 now. It's one of those where it's going to be used, it's going to have high mileage. Most of these cars are 20 plus years now. 
yeah. we're in 2023 so roughly around there so there's signs of wear everywhere in the cabin obviously this one as we can see has been kept really well we can see the seats are looking good obviously these are uh, the pole position seats so they're very different to the standard ones the standard ones some of the things we'll see is the wear on the bolster just as you can see there it's starting to come through some people can get it repaired but one of the main things with that is we could probably attach a picture of it when it's really broken it's probably just going to be a replacement seat because the price of having it reupholstered um, uh, with leather again is, is rather expensive so then we've got things across the cabin like switches uh, we've got some switches inside here that operate some of the things these will get worn out these are still nice and black whereas in most TTs that we look at these are pretty used up sometimes you won't even see what the button actually says these switches here love to go missing they love to crack so there's one here and one there you pull these off these are probably I think what 40 50 quid each on eBay at the minute expensive. they're very expensive for what they are uh, we've got the switches up here the hazard switch loves to go on these and that's a nice one to change but once again wear and tear in the cabin is something to be expected um, one of the big ones is the steering column so next to the steering column um, especially the key side if we go to the other side that loves to be scratched from the key um, so you'll see that after 100k miles that has got plenty of holes in there and yeah it just doesn't look very good so the door cards the bane of the sky it's, uh, there are so many things that can go wrong on these we've got these switches here for your windows these love to break over time uh, they love to get loose and used up you can see these are quite used already once again hard to find replacements it's one of those where we want to look at these and these silver bits here and the handles are all very used and uh, they don't look very great so as we can see these ones are carbon dipped no nope. no they are carbon actual Red. carbon yeah yeah actual full carbon you're coming home with me <laughs> you're coming home with me we just want to look at these because this is something you might want to tidy up in the future same with the handles if you've got people who are using long nails they'll scratch the back of this and overall these love to break it's a weird design to have this this net thing here but then again it goes through the, the whole car with the boot and things so these love to break here and here so that's something to look out for and well going into the sound system as we know it's not great even as the Bose upgraded system, it is very outdated. It's something that we've both changed um, and it's something we'd always recommend people change if you're into your music. If you just enjoy the sound of the car, don't worry about it. But it's something to factor in that the music quality isn't gonna be what a new car is these days. Um, so that's basically what we wanna look at in these. It's, it's a really big part of the car. Use it every time you get in and out and these do wear down quite quickly. So it just shows how the car's been kept uh, for the mileage that it's on. So the last thing I'm going to mention in this buyer's guide is actually making sure that the car has not been in an accident. Now, I know that this car is four wheel drive. This car obviously inspires confidence and sometimes can inspire too much confidence. And then that's when the serious problems start to happen. When coming to have a look at this car, obviously get the bonnet up, have a good look round, make sure sort of the fans have adequate space between here as these bumpers that normally come on the 225s or the 180s are fairly easy to get a hold of. So if the car has been in an accident, the bumper could still be just replaced. However, there could be serious sort of accident damage behind. So yeah, as mentioned, go in the engine bay, make sure that all the fans are not clipping on anything. Make sure that the rails as well, as you can just see down there and the other side as well, make sure they are all nice and straight have a good look down the engine bay as well in this car is fairly easy to navigate there is a lot of room to see down so make sure you have a good look and then also sort of walking down the side of the cars making sure that the color between the two panels etc are not different also you could do the knocking to see whether or not it's been filled with filler or it is just metal. So yeah, moving on back around, making sure you have a good look around. Again, the rear bumpers on these cars are very easy to come by and the differences between color um, would be a dead giveaway just in case it has been in an accident. Also, by having a look in the boot, you can lift this little cover up here, which I've already done to save you the ease of me struggling to get that off you can also have a look here in the quattro sport the battery is here however i believe the phone does run all the way around in the normal 225s this can actually be lifted he says as he breaks it this can be lifted out so you can actually have a look underneath here making sure obviously there's no issues or pushed in parts or pushed in metal towards the rear of the car obviously making sure there's no rust uh, no peeling or any of that nature 
and making sure that the car has obviously not been an accident because as mentioned these cars can get bought and sold all the time and inspire a lot of confidence with the awesome quattro system that they come with um but yeah don't get caught out with a dodgy car and there you have it five things that myself with the help of matty would look for when buying an Audi TT Mark 1 in 2024. Now, hopefully some of the points myself and Matty have discussed in this video will help you on your journey to purchase one of these amazing cars. These cars are arguably probably one of the best bangs for their book. And if you can look for one and potentially purchase one around the 2000 pound mark, I literally can't think of a better car, but yeah, if you can't tell, it is absolutely freezing still in the UK at the minute and we're still out here making videos for you guys. So I would appreciate it if you actually drop this uh, video a like. Also subscribe and hit the bell icon as well because you'll be notified every time I upload. <sighs> I'm gonna go inside now because it is, it is cold. Enough of me talking now, I'm gonna get going. But yeah, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Josh, this is my beautiful Mark 1 TT and I hope I have inspired you to also purchase one for yourself. But yeah, that was our POV. Peace out, guys.